announced it's placing the Gowanus Canal on its Superfund National Priorities list. The federal cleanup will take up to 12 years to complete at an estimated cost of 300 to 500 million dollars. The city is disappointed and so are others like longtime activist Buddy Scotto. Well this Superfund, I like the way they use that word fund, they don't have any money at all. The only money that's gone into the canal of any consequence that's affected any change at all has been the money that the grassroots community people did, the $458 million to build a sewer treatment plant. They were not visible and they were not around to help us get that money. They weren't help us around to get us the money to get the millions to get the flushing tunnel operational. Oh great, the federal government can now come in and say we'll make this a super fun site and get it cleaned up. We want to be damn sure that it does get cleaned up and that we don't have to wait another 20 or 30 years because we don't think we should have to wait because of all the work we've already done. The thing is, Superfund sounds great, federal government sounds great. The truth is, it's not super, nor do they have any funds. A lot is being left to the imagination. Uh, and one thing I'd like to mention, the city has $150 million to kick off the project versus zero for the feds. And some people say, well, gee, if I have the EPA here, why would I want the city to do it? Let the feds do it. As I mentioned earlier, the feds do not have the money. They get the money for cleanup by litigation and suing. First of all, let me dispel one popular misconception, which is that we get sites cleaned up through litigation. We don't. Over 1,600 sites on the, on the National Superfund list, over two-thirds of those have been completely cleaned up, done, finished, uh, and zero of them have gotten cleaned up through litigation. The whole principle of the Superfund program is that this is, is ca encapsulated in the shorthand term, the polluter pays. In this instance, we've already identified nine of such responsible parties, as, as, as they're called. Many, many, many household names. We're talking about big multinational corporations that have ample resources and ample technical capability to do a job of this complexity and this cost. So I am very optimistic that the, uh, there will be a, a core group of responsible parties who are going to be willing and able to, to do this work when the time comes. The super fun, I don't think any of us will get to see it at my age or, or Buddy's age. I mean, p people who have been proponents of cleanup. Um, if it takes 15, 20 years, we won't see it. But we'll be in walkers. <laughs> and that's uh, Mr. Scotto's uh, nightmare that if super fun comes in at 81 years old, he won't live uh, to see any change. Although I, I cajole him by saying members of your family have lived to be 98, Buddy, you'll see something. That is true. I have a gondola in my garage. I'm ready to come down the canal in my gondola. I've got a straw hat. I'm ready to sing O Sola Mia. And I thought I was going to live to see that happen. They're going to slow us down. There's no question about it. But we're going to fight like hell because we've been fighting like hell. And we don't know what else to do but fight like hell. Ten years, twelve years sounds like a long period of time when you're sitting here today. On the other hand, for people who have been waiting their entire lifetime, as many of those folks have, Buddy Scott and others, to get cleanup going, the fact that now it's another 10 or 12 years, I think, is not, uh, is not unreasonable. It took decades, over a century, to contaminate this canal to the point where it is one of the most polluted water bodies in the United States. But give us a decade to turn that around. The bottom line is that we all need to work together to make uh, sure that we um, change and um, create a wonderful waterfront that everyone can enjoy. We'll see a lot of um, wildlife. We're already seeing bait fish in the canal. We've already seen birds coming into the canal chasing said uh, bait fish. We had a seal here for a couple of days. Uh, some days when I walk across the, can uh, the bridge I see uh, mallard ducks. Uh, anywhere from 10 to 15. 
just uh, floating along the top. So it's, it's exciting to see wildlife. I think it will become a very attractive place to live. Uh, if you think of what the Lower West Side of Manhattan looked like 20 or 30 years ago with derelict piers and rotting away superstructures there, and what it looks like now with the Hudson River Park uh, and with the spectacular views out over the Hudson River, uh, that can tell you a little bit about the demand for access to our waterways that people really in, in feel very, very strongly. So I, I anticipate that this will be a more widely desirable location within a decade. A viable uh, waterway for, for boating, uh, kayaking, um, eventually um, maybe some food stores along the way, and, a, and a, a nice walkway to go up and down the canal. Um, a public place for people to go. If we clean up the Guanas Canal, and we turn the canal from being a terrible minus to this community to a big positive, we will have done what the Texans were able to do with the San Antonio River Walk. They turned the San Antonio River Walk into the biggest tourist attraction in the entire state of Texas. It has immeasurably added to their economic base and the income for the state of Texas. We have that opportunity to do this with the Guanas Canal right now. And hopefully, in a big, big picture, that it become an exemplary restoration on this historic body of water with this great historic legacy that the entire country can champion for a city where we pay such high rent, we pay so many taxes, that we deserve more. Environmental quality should not be a trade-off. I would like it to be clean for our children. And I would have to suspect that most of the people who have uh, somewhat silver uh, coloring in their hair would also agree that it's really about the children. I know a one-year-old that's born today will have a tomorrow from which he's not threatened by health threats, where he doesn't have to go out of state, you know, in order to enjoy, you know, a green open space or nature, to see a diamondback therapin, to see a red-tailed hawk or a peregrine falcon, that he can have that right in his backyard without an expense, a huge expense, or exploiting himself elsewhere. I think that's a wonderful thing. I certainly hope that my daughter, if not my daughter, my granddaughter, will finally see a San Antonio River Walk right up here in Brooklyn and probably will be one of the biggest tourist attractions in the city of New York where we can have open space promenading along the canal, uh, shops, restaurants, coffee house. I mean, it has so much potential.